Hi everyone, I'm Lauren with Yogi Beans and I am so excited, excited, see I can't even talk, I'm that excited, <laughs> to speak with Bella Noche. Bella Noche is the chapter director for Drag Story Hour Long Island and an active storyteller for the New York City chapter as well. She is known as the Mermaid of New York, I love that, and enchants audiences with her charisma, creativity, and spark of color. And I am excited to speak with Bella today because our theme for the month at the Bean Spot is authenticity. And Bella, I just, when I was thinking of who do I want to interview for authenticity, I don't, I was like, I need to interview a drag queen because <laughs> I, I felt, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I felt like a drag queen has their two personas that are so yes, very fully true, very embodied true and authentic in both of them. And I find that, and I love, I love drag and going to drag shows. So there was that. Yay. And I just thought though, this is a person that you have to be fully authentic in your being to, to give a good drag performance, I should say. Right. Uh, um, yes. Oh, I, I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree. Good. Okay. So I, I have a few questions that I just wanted to speak with you um, specifically with authenticity pertaining to how children can foster their own authentic sense of being. So uh, I wanted to start with the, uh, the definition of authenticity, which feels very Brene Brown to me, but <laughs> uh, <authentic laughs> well, so that's okay. But authenticity, true to one's own personality, spirit, or character. So my first question for you is, when did you decide you could not be anything other than your authentic self? Um, and that's a, actually a really, really uh, interesting loaded question. So um, the first time I ever like knew that I had to be my authentic self was uh, when I came out as gay. Um, I grew up in a very, very conservative Christian home and like being gay was not like the thing you did. Um, right. And uh, I hid it for many, many years. Um, and when I was 19, I was kind of outed a little bit. Um, and uh, I was basically told that I could not be gay in my parents' house. And so I was like, I was faced with the choice of just like, okay, do I go back and continue this normal life and like do what everyone else wants? Or do I say, I know who I am. And if I can't be who I am here, then I'm gonna go be myself somewhere else. And this was way before drag. Um, so it was, it was when I came out and, uh, it was just, uh, a choice of, I'm going to live the way that I want and the way that I know who I am and what I stand for. Um, so it was then at 19. Wow. Okay. And did you have, because you're, you know, did you have that, that Kenny, that must've been so hard to be in a house where that wasn't accepted. Did you have any adult role models that showed you it was possible to be your authentic self? Did you have someone, an adult to look uh, to? Actually, yes. Um, so I have uh, an aunt. She is literally my favorite family member. Her name is Arlene. Um, hi, aunt and, Arlene. Uh, <laughs> yes, hi, Aunt Arlene. Um, she's the one who introduced me to like mermaids as a little kid. And so she's actually responsible for a lot of, um, I want to say creative encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she, she knew for a while that like I was different and uh, uh, she was always her authentic self. Like she was just always out there, colorful, red lips. She's the reason why I always wear hoop earrings. Oh, um, has like, she seen so she's, you perform? Yes, yes, she's been to multiple shows. She's a huge fan. Um, so, and I even told, I remember the first time I told her, I was just like, you actually inspired my drag character a lot in the beginning because you know, in drag, I hadn't done the mermaid thing yet. I was just like trying to figure out uh, all the things going on. And when I thought of like, what woman would I want to be? It was her. Um, so yeah. Oh, that I, I'm sure she loved hearing that. And that was very heartwarming. I, I, I love her so much. Okay. So here's another question. And this might be, you know, uh, I hope it's not another loaded question, but it's another question that I- It's think okay. I'm, I'm fine with sharing. Okay. I'm fine okay. with sharing. Okay. I'm an open book. <laughs> Well, I, th I think I'm hoping this interview helps children who are maybe um, having a hard time owning their authentic self, you know, For so sure. how do you embrace your unique and authentic self, knowing that people are going to judge you and may even reject you? Um, 
Well, one of the things that um, I've learned in life being uh, on my own younger and figuring stuff out for my own, and then especially drag um, has taught me is just like, I don't care what anybody thinks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. You know, right. and it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you say that and people kind of just like, oh, what do you mean? And it's just like, yes, obviously, you know, I have people that I care about, people I love, people who I go to for advice and things like that, and their opinion matters to me. But if they are not important to you, if they are not, you know, an active part of your life, if they are not paying your bills, like their opinion is just that it's an opinion and everybody has them. And a lot of opinions are not going to line up with yours and that's okay. But that doesn't mean you have to change who you are to align with opinions that don't matter to you, you know? Right. No, that, I think that's so important for children, especially, you know, as they starting like in middle school, that's when we really, you know, start yes. feeling yes, like, yes, yes. am I different? You want to like fit in with everyone and all your right. peers. And then that becomes a struggle because you, you're ultimately, if you're not your authentic self, you're unhappy. Right. You're and, you know, again, I was, I went to a private Christian school and uh, I was, uh, for lack of a better term, the different one. Right. Um, and like, it wasn't something that I even like tried. It just was, you know, I right. was different from everybody else. I didn't do the other things that all the other boys like doing. I, all my best friends were girls, you right. know, it was, um, it was just, I was just different. Um, and I didn't think it was a bad thing until other people my age started telling me it was. Mm. And for a long time, I didn't like myself for a long time. I wanted to be like everybody else. I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to, you know, be like in the line and they're just like, oh, that one's different. But now it's kind of like my moneymaker. <laughs> right, 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 right. As we get older, we're able to, I think, embrace our authentic self, not, not everyone. I think people still struggle with it. Um, however, especially if you've had a journey like you've had, we're able to embrace our authentic self more and know that it's our authenticity and uniqueness that make us special and make us money and make us unique. Absolutely. And that's our purpose Absolutely. in the world. How can parents fully help their children fully embody their authentic self? Um, so I, I'm going to say a couple of things yeah, on that, because um, I, I am not a parent, but um, I have, I've worked with kids for a very long time, um, especially queer kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the biggest thing that parents should do is like when your child is trying to tell you something, listen, you need to like listen with not like your parent brain with like your world brain, you mm -hmm. know, especially nowadays, children are not only, and I'm not, I don't say this is a bad thing, children exposed to so many different things now, um, solely just by turning on the TV, things that were or, not on or this, TV before. Right, right exactly. Having, like I, yeah. I was in going to school and there was no social media, there was right. no like mobile internet. And so children uh, and young adults now today are constantly bombarded with different things and information, whether it be opinions, whether it be things that are going on in the world, um, so I think that parents need to above all, like if your child is trying to tell you something, you really do like need to listen mm -hmm. and take a second. And, you know, I know there's that thing. I'm just like, oh, you want to be their parent, not their friend. But I feel like there are times to be their friend. And then there are times to be their parent. And when they're trying to tell you something, especially in the realm of confusion about something or questioning who they are, or just a question about life. You know, there's, I've heard so many times um, adults say, it was just like, oh, well, they're not old enough to understand that yet. They'll, they'll know it later. And it's just like, if they're asking the question, they're old enough to understand, yeah. you know? And so I would definitely say, listen and be honest, be honest. There's no point in sugarcoating an answer that eventually they're going to find out. Eventually they're going to grow up and leave the house. And then they're going to look back and you're just like, why did you tell me that? Why didn't you just tell me what was up? you know and it just it, it 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 when you when you are receptive to your child and you give them that love and a honest answer that encourages future communication you know it encourages them to like oh i can talk to mom and dad or you know whatever guardian or adult that they have that you know okay cool i know i can ask a question and i'm not judged i'm actually listened to and uh, i'm not going to be you know fed nonsense i mean, it's you 
spoke about like three of our values, just honesty, listening, and, you know, communication, being open. Yes, and it's I love so important. It's so important. It's everything. And I love how you said, like, you know, there's the parent, there's the friend, but there's also, there's also just being a human being, right? right like that world, right. like just like, I know with my girls too, like sometimes I just have not be the, the parent or the friend, just a human and listen to them for who right. they are, you know, Correct. who Correct. they are. Now, children, you know, they have their parents and guardians, and they also spend a lot of time in school. So mm -hmm. how can teachers model authenticity for their students? Um, well, teachers, are, that's, I, I think that even more so if um, a child comes and asks you something, or if, you know, you see someone's kind of struggling with something, you know, you as, as an educator and as, you know, a teacher that you see these kids almost as much, if not more than their parents right. do during the year, you know, take the initiative and just ask, be like, Hey, everything. Okay. Hey, I, I kind of heard this. Are you all right? Or, you know, and give them that opportunity to open up. Cause I would imagine with a teacher, it's, it's a little harder just because not only, you know, it's not like a parent where they're there every day and they have all these other kids that they're right. responsible for. But I think it's really important for teachers to let children know that, yeah, if you wanna come talk to me about something, come talk to me about it. And uh, obviously depending on what it is, then it's up to the teacher to make sure that they respond appropriately and you know do all that. But you know, it's I, I think that teachers should absolutely take initiative. Yes, because also teachers might see things in the school dynamic with the child, with their peers. Right, that a right, parent that the parents not, don't see. That yep. a parent doesn't see. So I think that's a really, really important. And you hear so many stories about how like a teacher said one thing to a child that changed their whole world. Oh, they, yes, that happens all the time. There's there's literally two teachers. I'll never forget their names. Mr. Ty <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's, he, was, he was my math teacher. And uh, I'm really bad at math, by the way, but he was like, he like really, really like took the initiative and like helped me to make sure that I passed like my regents and stuff like that. Um, and then my other one, which uh, is funny enough is my third grade teacher, Mr. Coyman. And he, he knew I was different. And I remember one, one thing in particular. So when I was a kid, I used to love Lisa Frank. Um, oh, and love. that was like one of oh my God, uh, the lip glosses and the stickers. Hello. The folders, the oh, notebooks, everything. like I wanted it all. I wanted it all. And my parents were like, you can get the folders. <laughs> so I had the folders and I remember being in third grade and I got made fun of for it. And so he went up, he was like a couple people who's like, what's funny about the folder? And they were just like, oh, it's for a girl. And he was, they were like, how do you know that? And like the kid just kind of like shut down, shot down. Right. You right. know, it was just like, who are you to say what's for a boy and for a girl? Mm -hmm. You know, they're just colors and animals. Right, 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 right. That's true. It's it's so interesting because my oldest daughter's in third grade and you said this was your third grade teacher. And that just goes to show what a lifelong impact a teacher can have. Yes, on the absolutely. Because I look at my daughter as a little girl and to think as an adult, you know, and the same for me, my fifth grade teacher, I still speak to. She was pivotal. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah, so that's, I, I agree with you 100% about the power of a, of a teacher. What, and this is kind of a, this is a big question. What's the biggest gain from living an authentic life? Um, honestly, happiness. You know, I have never felt more happier than just being myself, you know, and there's so much pressure in the world. And as you get older, there's more, not only from, you know, whether it be grades or a job or like where you're headed to your appearance and your life experiences. There's so much like expectation, especially when you're younger and the early you learn, just like, just be yourself. That is, I've never been more happy than when I'm just, when I've finally been like, nope, this is me and I like me. And if you don't like me, that's cool. We don't have to talk, but if Bye. you do, all right, let's be friends. I think you said that earlier, and I think that's so important for children and adult. Like, not everyone's going to like you, you know, and that's okay. That's it is. Okay. It is. I I know that even as a drag entertainer, not everybody likes me, you know, right, and it's right. kind of my job to get people to like me. But like, you're never going to win everybody over. And there was a, a, a drag queen that I, I've not met personally, but they were on TV, and I remember um, something that they said, and they said, you know, 
stop trying to win over the naysayers and the haters Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. just continually try to impress yourself and the people that do love and support you. Yeah, that's that's such good advice. I mean, because especially the more popular you get in anything, whether it's business or drag or just- Oh, for sure, for sure. Like you, and I I feel the same way. Even when I teach it, I I tell when I do our trainings, I'm like, my energy is my energy and it's not for everyone. And I'm big and I'm loud and- not everyone's going to like that. And that's, that's okay. You know, right. same with yoga. I mean, just the, just the fact that I am, I am, you know, I don't look at right now, but the fact that I'm a gay male, automatically, there are a lot of people who don't like right. me, right. you know, right. just for that fact alone. So like, if people are going to make these conversations and decisions about you based on a singular fact, like, like, They're not worth you don't it. have to, you don't have to impress everybody. Right. Right. And I think that's really if children, especially those, you know, children of all age, but I specifically think of that middle school, those years are so Yep, hard. right before high school, because high yeah. school is like when you really are trying, I was like, okay, who are you, right. you know? High right. school is when you're really like, okay, you're figuring it out with them, but high school is just like, no, but who are you though? Yes, yes, and it's such, it's such a hard time, especially with the, you know, social media and the phone Ugh, and all of those I things. can't, I can't, I can't imagine. I can't even imagine. I really either. can't. I, I, I feel so old saying that, but I can't. No, it's, it's true. I my, Myself too. It was hard enough back when I was in middle school and high school and then to just know what everyone's doing, what everyone's thinking. I just, that's a whole other, whole yeah. other topic. So if you can give children any advice on giving them permission to be their fullest authentic self, what would that be? Um, you don't need permission to be your fullest authentic self. To be your fullest authentic self is completely up to you. No one can convince you. No one can tell you. No one can, you know, force you to be your most authentic self. They can encourage, they can support, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to be your authentic self. So you don't need anyone's permission to be your authentic self. Just be you. Oh, that was so good. Can you, we also didn't, I, can you speak a little bit, Um, because I know you have to go soon because you're going to be reading. Can you talk a little bit about, drag story hour just for people yes. that don't know because i've been so, following you guys for a while and i'm oh well island, thank you thank you so okay wanna, awesome you, so amazing you to get you to come come to my local library yes i would love to we need to do it we'll, yes. we're going to talk Definitely. um so drag drag story hour is now an international uh, organization and we go into libraries uh, schools and other educational spaces we started doing middle school now high school we just started a senior center program oh, that's and amazing. so it's yes yeah, so, so it's super exciting and so it's not just about reaching kids even though that's like our core yeah, yeah. of spreading positivity and light and um also queer education because now you know the queer culture is everywhere and kids need to know that first of all it exists second of all it's okay and third of all they might be part of it yeah you know and so it's it's about showing that you can be your most unique and authentic yeah, self at uh, any time love it i love it yes i love the mission um you're international so for anyone watching this they can check out where drag story hour is taking place by them yes yes we have chapters all over the place so it's amazing and i bet i bet children before we go i bet children especially young children have questions right do they come up to you with and, and ask you about your just your outfit or quite like wh- well what honestly is- it's so funny because i've i've been asked that question before and the number one question I get from the kids is if my, if my hair is real. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> something like that, right, You right. know, it's, it's not these questions and there's the, there are a lot of adults who are like, oh, but isn't that gonna confuse the kids? Like someone, no. you know, just, and it was just like, no. And I, the way I say it is, it's like, I'm no different than someone dressed up as like Ariel from the Little they Mermaid or like Belle from Being the Beast, right, you right. know? It would be this, it would be the same concept, you know, right. just because I'm a guy underneath all this doesn't change the package or what we're there to do. They look at you as like the, the character, the mermaid. Right, and right. It's, it's it's really enough that it's, it's ironic that the kids are like super open to it. It's the adults that sometimes you have to, who need a little bit more education than right. the children. That may, uh, well, children are open and they're receptive. And it's like, mm-hmm. if you tell them something like, oh, this, you know, my daughter, oh, she has two daddies, okay. Like there's no, there's no, yeah. it just is what it is, okay. And then they go off on their dick. Right, it's path, not, it's, you know? they, they have not, to, it's the society and the adults yeah. around them that's just like oh no this is important you need to care about that you should think about that and that's what kind of uh 
colors someone's uh, lens on life. But uh, you know, if you can, if you learn how to accept that early and accept everything, you know, life it'll be a lot easier for you. Trust me, a lot happier <laughs> for sure. Oh, oh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I really thank, no, thank you so much for having me. You're yes. you're so lovely. Oh, oh my gosh, thank you. As are you. We're gonna talk. I, we're gonna stay connected because I oh wanna yes, be, you got we got a contact. Yeah. We're gonna do a we're gonna do a Long Island Story Hour together. I'm excited. We could do some yoga. Well, you have I don't know if do you have like a fin on? I uh, um not always. Oh, okay, I'm not wearing it currently. <laughs> Um, okay. But no, we could in definitely in course. So can, usually in story hour, we, there's some sort of like physical activity that we yeah, do. We'll, we'll um, do so we could fun. do like a little mini like yoga session. Yeah. I will wear yoga appropriate uh, and a later. yoga appropriate outfit. <laughs> I love it. Oh, but, um, thank yeah, that'd so be much. great. Thank you, Jonathan, for coordinating. Um, have a great story hour. And it was such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so, so much. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll talk soon. For sure. Thanks, Bella. Right. Bye. Bye.